Hi guys, I'm Carrie Holloway and I'm a first year student here in St. John's in Oxford. Uh, I do English language and literature. I used to go to Sri KL in Subang uh, for secondary school where I did my IGCSEs. But for sixth form, I moved to Cardiff in Wales where I did my A-levels. It was a local community college that I went to in Cardiff. Uh, so I did four subjects there. I did English literature, politics, economics and geography. My family still lives in Puchong in Malaysia, but I've been in the UK for about three years now. So I would say the most important thing to know about the English degree here is that it's very period based as in the papers that we do every year are based on periods of literature. So for example, in first year, my two main periods are going to be Victorian and then Modernism. So, but within that itself, even though that can seem quite rigid as part of the course, within the periods, what we are uh, allowed to do is extremely flexible. There have been weeks where I'm not interested in any of the texts that my tutors have recommended to us, and all I have to do is email them saying that, oh, can I do something else instead? And they've always said yes. Um, and another thing which I find super interesting about the way that English is approached here is that we always bring in other subjects. It's not just, oh, how do you approach this from like an English point of view? There have been weeks where we've used art criticism to guide our research, or where we've used psychoanalysis to look at characters, or sometimes our reading is guided by political movements like using feminism or maybe using race theory to approach a certain book. So I think that's my favourite thing about the degree is that it's so flexible, but also it's so, so broad based in itself. Often most of the people that apply to John's apply here because it's the richest college in Oxford, which is, it's true, but I actually had no idea that was the case until I came to interviews myself. The reason I applied here was because it has one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest rent in the whole university, and also it has really easily accessible kitchens. So for example, I share a kitchen with only three other people and it's literally right outside my door, whereas a lot of other colleges either don't have kitchens or they have kitchens where you have to share with so many people, it's very difficult to cook regularly. Um, um, so yeah, kitchens was really important to me because I like cooking and I didn't want to have to eat in hall all the time. So that, yeah, well, I applied to John's because of kitchens and rent. So to apply for English at Oxford, there's only one test you need to do and it's called the ELAT. It's essentially an unseen paper where they give you 8 to 10 extracts and you have to choose two and write a comparative essay. Most of them tend to be poems, but they can also be extracts from books. Um, I think what's the most valued in an answer in the ELAP paper is probably originality and obviously quality of writing. Um, quality of writing you can improve just by writing more. Make sure you you know put a lot of effort into your normal schoolwork if you're doing an English A level. Um, if not, then just write responses maybe to books and poems that you've read in your own time. Um, maybe get a second opinion from teachers or from your parents because. Um, that's what I did prior to my test and I didn't do a lot of practice which is probably why I didn't do particularly well in my exam but I've heard from my peers here some of them did not prepare at all and they did really really well so if you have fresh and original ideas then I would definitely say that is something that you should definitely put forward in the paper. The interviews themselves were surprisingly comfortable. When I went to my first interview, it was at 9am on a Monday morning. I was the first English student to be interviewed here at St. John's. But the professor was just so friendly and it really eased me into it. And it turned out to just be like a really interesting academic discussion. We talked about my personal statement a little bit. We had a little bit of unseen work to do where I had to prepare a poem like 20 minutes before the interview. Um, but overall, it was just really, really good because the professors are genuinely so interested in what you're interested in. That's why I think that the personal statement plays a pretty big role in the English subject. Um, because at least for my interviews, my professors, each of the professors that interviewed me went through my personal statement and asked me what I thought about each thing that I mentioned. Uh, which made me feel comfortable because at least they were asking me things that I was familiar with. But even the questions that were more general and unrelated to my personal statement, they were perfectly valid questions and they were, in no way did I feel at any point they, they were trying to catch me out or trick me into doing anything. So I would say that if you are coming to Oxford for interviews, just try to enjoy your time and genuinely try to enjoy the discussions that you're having because obviously these academics are the leading people in their field. So I would say take full advantage if you do get to come here. Realistically, if you know you have the grades, like if you know you're an AA star student um, and if you are genuinely really interested in your subject, then I would 100% recommend applying because are you wasting a spot? I mean, it's only one spot plus it's such a good university, I would never really call it a waste. Even if you didn't get in and you just got to interviews, I think it's an experience worth having. So 
Yeah, I would say that mainly if you have the grades, like if, if you know you're a relatively good student and you can meet the requirements that the the course needs, then definitely apply to Oxford. The tutorials are probably my favourite thing about the Oxford academic system that I've experienced so far. Most of my tutorials have been alone for the past two terms. It's because my tutors prefer, prefer to give tutorials based on the essay topics that we've written about. And because in English our subject is so flexible, we tend to write about different things all the time. So they find it more productive to see you by yourself so that the tutorial can be way more personalised. I think that because the tutorials are so personal, you learn so much in a short amount of time that you spend with your professor. So all of my tutorials have been between 30 to 45 minutes when I'm with my professor by myself. The few times that I've had pair tutorials, they, they extend to about an hour. Um, but yeah, most of mine have been about 30 or 40 minutes. And the amount that you can learn in such a short amount, uh, in such a short time, is actually really, really surprising. Because your tutor can pick up on little things that maybe you missed in your research while you were writing your essay. And just one thing that they point out in your essay or in the book that you were reading can totally change your perspective in a matter of seconds. Or even if they haven't changed your mind, your tutors can suggest different approaches you can take to, to approaching like a specific topic or a book. Or they can suggest wider reading in a specific area if you're interested in that. Um, so yeah, because it's so personal, it really taps into your interests and really enables you to develop that when you think about revising and preparing for exams in the future. It is difficult, like there are times where you will feel like you're drowning or that you're suffocated by work. There have been times that I just sit at my desk and I'm like, oh my god, how will I finish this work within the next three days or whatever. But the thing is, despite that, I haven't found it unmanageable so far. Like, I've had, I had some really really busy weeks in second term where I had to write two essays in a week or I had to write three essays in ten days, including all the reading that is involved with writing the essays. Um, but even then, I always had time to take an hour or so to make my own dinner or to go out for a bit of a walk or to have dinner in the dining hall with my friends. Like, I haven't, th there hasn't been a point where I felt that, oh my god, I can't do this anymore. Um, but I also know that my friends who have felt that way have gotten tremendous support from either the college welfare um, officers or even from your tutors because I've had some friends who were struggling with the workload and when they just told their tutors like oh I, I just can't do this essay this week or I, I can't finish the work that you've set us and the tutors are usually really really understanding they're more than happy to give extensions usually as long as you can produce evidence of that you've been trying to do the work um, but yeah, other than that, I actually think the work-life balance is manageable, but you do have to train yourself to be very productive with the time that you have. My favourite thing about Oxford is how the city has a certain way of reminding you that it's special. So it's like how I walk out of my room sometimes and I get to walk amongst buildings that have been here since the 14-1500s, that have seen wars and plagues and everything. And the fact that I get to live in and amongst them is just so, so cool. And then you walk outside my college gates and I get to see the Bodleian Library or the Rad Cam, which is the thing that you always see on the postcards about Oxford. Um, so the fact that I get to walk past that every time I go to a lecture. And then there are the, the smaller things, which are probably not as obvious, but I still find really cool is that you see certain like bits of info on these plaques on the walls around Oxford. So for example, there's a pub in town where it says, oh, it's rumoured that William Shakespeare used to come here on the way to London. He used to stop over here and have a drink before he used to continue like on his way. Or there's a pub um, near my college as well where they said, oh, J.R.R. Tolkien who wrote The Lord of the Rings and C.S. Lewis who wrote Narnia. Um, they used to sit in here and talk about their writing all the time and they had like a little club where they used to gather and it's just stuff like that where you're constantly reminded that oh you're in a place that's kind of a little bit different from everywhere else. I personally quite like it. I know people who don't um, because it's just not like part of their vibe, you know, the music that they play. But probably one of my favourite things that I always tell people about is that the one club that I go to the most, it plays a lot of like ABBA, a lot of like 70s, 80s kind of music and also like some 2000s stuff is like mixed in there. But my favourite thing is at towards the end of the night, they always play this one remix of Country Road by John Denver. You guys probably know the song, like most of our parents know the song. So you know it's like a, like a country kind of like folksy song. But this club plays like a EDM kind of dance version of it, which I remember the first time I heard it, I thought was so strange. But now every time I hear it, it just makes me want to party because it's just, it's ridiculous, but I love it. It's so funny.